live from Hickory, it's country-ish. Alan! Get the country, boy. And he's making it good. He was Jaws underdog, dressed in beer rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his dream and headed for Southern Cal. Wound up the TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last cause he's in Hickory. That's right, I am from Hickory and I'm happy about it. I hope you're happy no matter where you're from. Uh, what up, bumpkins? You're about to watch and or listen to episode 71 of Country Ish, and we have a happy, cheerful, carefree show for you today, and that's going to make sense in a minute. Uh, we got Best Trends. We've got a uh, very funny comedian, Tim Gaither. Going to be zooming into the show here in a little bit. A great story in small town news. Have you ever hit a deer? Huh? Let me know in the comments section. I want to know. Um, and... Goodwill Hunting. It's a jam-packed show. I want you to know we're everywhere. Anywhere you can get a podcast, we're there. Apple Podcast, you know, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, all of it, we're there. Um, but most importantly, right now, we're going live. We're live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And we're growing a little bit every time. And we appreciate that. We know why it's happening. It's because of people like you who are hitting that share button. That's right. If you look at the bottom right, I think it's the bottom right corner. Maybe down here. Maybe it's over here. Look at, look at the corners at the bottom. You're going to see a button just like this here. And if you hit that share button, let's see how many people we can get up in here right now. You know what I'm saying? Because um, also I want you to know we're going live, and i got two interns back here that are checking your comments. I've got... Uh, Elliot, the intern, and intern Isaiah. Uh, one of them's doing YouTube, one of them's doing Facebook. So uh, let's see how many shares we can get. And I've, d I've come up with this thing that I want to do. Um, I've been doing this last couple of weeks. Because some people are like, well, if I hit the share button, then it takes my eyes off of what you're doing, and I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss a dang thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be entertaining at all, okay? Um, in fact... This is perfect time for you to hit the share button because you're not going to miss anything because I'm not doing anything hilarious. Uh, in fact, I'm just, I'm really being stupid right now. And this is kind of embarrassing. In fact, don't look at this. Just go ahead and hit share while I do this. It's a little thing that I like to call the share stare. If I could make you share, I'd ask you to do it today. Please hit that arrow button that points this way. I need you to hit the share button. I need you to hit it now. Did you do it? Huh? Of course you did. Appreciate that. Yes, I got my hair cut, by the way. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I appreciate you hitting that share button. That's why we're getting bigger and we're growing. And thank you. If you haven't done it yet, you can do it anytime. Do it at the end. Anyway, thank you. Let's get on to the show. Uh, let me start by introducing the guy sitting next to me, right? Very handsome fella. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, I got to share this video with you. At some point during the show, our buddy Tim Tucker made something very funny with your face on it. Really? Okay. Yeah, and we're going to share it in a minute. Let me introduce my friend sitting right here. Very handsome, very good looking. Uh, he's related to a very famous guy. Another, another like, famous good looking dude. A guy named John Stamos. Got his little brother Marcus Stamos in here. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Love your hair. Yeah, I cut it. Why'd you cut it for? Well, uh, I'm doing a little movie with a guy named John Schneider. 
He's a Dukes of Hazard boy. Bo Duke, Bo. the 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 OG Bo Duke, <laughs> slid across hoods. Yeah, he was a hood. Slider. I'd like to. I'm gonna ask him if he can still do that. By I the bet way. he can. He still looks good. Yeah, good shape. I'm gonna ask him that. Um, but he's doing a movie called uh, Poker Run, and when we had him on the podcast, I said, if you need me for anything, you let me know. He goes, you know what? I'll do that. And he wrote a part for me, just for you. Yeah, and so I'm gonna be playing a cop, and cops don't have mullets. Good. So I had to cut my hair. Now, I've been told I can keep this, but I'm going to trim it. Yeah, well, they're letting cops keep facial hair nowadays, too. Yeah. So, so we'll do that, and I'm very I'm looking forward to that. So, And I'll give you updates on that uh, as it happens, but uh, good to see you. How was your weekend? Good weekend. I uh, went out and uh, went to a place in Hickory, a night club, dance club, and wasn't able to go mm. with you because you weren't here. Town, I had a gig yeah. in uh, – Walhalla. How do you say it? Walhalla. Yeah, I like to say it like a, there were some geese. So yeah. Jody and I went down. I like to say it like this. Walhalla. 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 Like that. Yeah. Sounds like a, a bird might do that. That's a bird call. Yeah. Yeah. And they came. Uh, so Jody and I went down. So I had a show Saturday night in Walhalla, South Carolina. Thank you all. Everybody who came. We packed the house. It wasn't just me. My buddy Reno Collier, who is a very, very funny comedian. He's a headliner, and I had to follow him. Oh, no. And that's not easy. You followed him? Yeah, I okay. had to go last. I'm sorry. But I mean, we're going to flip for it. He yeah. basically said to me, anytime we're in a state that ends in Alina, I have to headline. Yeah, get it. Uh, and if we go to Georgia or maybe somewhere up north. He's on Bob and Tom a lot. You know the yeah. Bob and Tom radio oh, yeah. show? Yeah. And I'm on John Boy and Billy a lot. So in the John Boy Billy markets, I will headline. In the Bob and Tom markets, he will headline. Yeah. Anyway, I was sitting in the back of the room watching him just crush. And I'm going like, oh, oh man. man. I got to step my game up. Yeah, I'm like, somebody light it. Go ahead and give him the light. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it went great. And thank you. We packed the house. And thank you for coming. Uh, we're hoping to do more of those reaping Reno's. Um, R&R's. Yeah, R&R. A &R, little R&R. &R. Just take a little R&R. Did, did I just coin that? You did, bud. You're welcome, man. I appreciate it. That's why no I got worries. you here, man. No worries. Thank you. A little R&R, &R, Reaping Reno. Uh, look for more of those probably starting in uh, early of next year. We'll start doing a bunch of them in theaters uh, all over the country. Theaters. 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 Yes, 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 yes. But we had a great time. Uh, Jody and I went down on uh, Friday because it wasn't just me and Reno. The guy who was the MC, Tommy Donovan. The original Sir Purr, the Carolina Panthers mascot, the one that invited me onto the field, yep. was the MC, which I arranged that. You know, I'm like, well, he lives in Greenville, and that's not far from Walhalla. He's been doing stand up maybe about a year or so now. And I'm like, why don't you come introduce us? Go up there and do about 15 minutes. Good. He did good. He, he did. did good, good. And he did good. And he also brought the outfit. So at the end of the oh, show, the we, at the end of the show, I, I was telling my Sir Purr story. But he, when he's doing his comedy, he's not talking about how he used to be the mascot. He's talking about being a dad and all. Uh, I mean, his life now. Yeah. So he never brings up that he's was once the mascot. And so, you know, I got that bit where I talk about getting kicked out of the game or whatever, and I say like, you know, I wish I could meet the original Sir Purr. I mean, who knows? I don't know who the guy is. He could be here right now, and then he comes walking out. In the outfit, doing the Tootsie Roll. Cotton candy, sweet as gold, let me see the Tootsie. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. So that's what he used to do. Anyway, we had a great time. And I um, hate you missed it, but we'll do more. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Reno. Thank you all. All the citizens of Wahala. Appreciate you. Um, let me let me tell you about more tour dates. Yeah, you have something. No, but you, <clears throat> you were talking about you had fed geese. Oh, thank you. You had. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Another reason Feeding you're here. Feeding geese crackers or something. <laughs> yeah. I know you were talking about it. Jody and I went down on Friday because Tommy Donovan has a cabin on the lake, a very nice lake called Lake Kiwi. And it's not, it's kind of an, it's a man made lake. It's kind of, they just dammed up this river and it's only been there about 48 years. Wow. And so it, the water's nice. Anyway, yeah. I took a Jody took a video of me feeding these geese. I thought you'd like to see it. Go ahead and play it, Alan. We'll talk over this. So here's me, um, and I named these geese these, <laughs> these geese, ke um, 
Re- Listen, Reggie? They're hissing at me. Isn't that crazy? It's like a snake. It's like a snake or a, a cat. Snakey snake. Yeah, it's a snake snake. Snake snake. Now, wh- here's what happens. On. One of them, I named them Cliff and Reggie. So, I give the cracker to Cliff. Reggie takes out of Cliff's mouth. What? Watch this. Um, here you go. He's already snapping at him. Don't be a douche, Reggie. Watch this. So he's got it. And watch this. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have some of that. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Alan. Um, but yeah, man. You ever had any? You ever ate geese? Have a what? You ever ate, ate a goose? Um. Yes. Really? I have. And duck. H- have you heard of a traducan? No. Is that a duck goose mix? Yes, it is. It's when they stuff. It's horrible, but they stuff a turkey with a duck or a chicken. I believe. Elliot's shaking his head. Do you know about this? Uh, yes, sir. Am I right? Uh, yes, sir. You are. Okay. I thought it was a stuffed with, with a, a turkey stuffed with duck and chicken. I didn't know if it was either or. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, um, I think it's a duck and chicken. Mm-hmm. Do you know what fragois is? Elliot shaking his head. Mark, do you know what fragois is? No, but but Elliot needs to go on um, Jeopardy. The trivia show, yeah. yeah. Elliot knows a lot of things. He does know a lot of things. Uh, that would be a fun game we could play. Elliot versus Isaiah. Both of them have a lot of useless trivia knowledge. They do. And it comes in handy in shows like this, so I appreciate it. Fragois, would you like to know what it is? Yeah, I have no it's idea. It's horrible. It's basically they 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 feed a goose a lot of crap to make it really fat and they stuff it down its throat and then they cook it am i right elliot uh, yes sir I, th- I, I believe that they force feed it vodka to make its liver fatty that's <laughs> that's what it is they force feed these geese vodka wow okay so yeah i've had it before are you asking me because you've had duck or geese? no i've never never had yeah. it. i don't know why i, I didn't like it uh, the duck was there's a lot of tiny bones and it's a little bit chewy. It's it's not as good as chicken, I, I, in my opinion. Yeah. Have you had it, Elliot? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Isaiah? Hard pass. No, sir. Yeah, I've had duck. Oh, what are your thoughts? I like duck. <laughs> there we go. I've Which had duck. Ri- I like duck. Riveting. <laughs> uh, uh, can you start doing food reviews? Because that pretty much summed up everything you need to know about duck. Yes. Have you ever been to Duck Island? You know, that's a place. I've had duck donuts. Duck donuts. That's the thing. Yeah, duck donuts. What is that? It's, it's just donut company. Oh, okay. Got gotcha. you. Well, um, speaking of ducks and and uh, fowl, um, things that fly, I will be flying to some gigs coming up. Do you see that segue, dude? Nice. Some people are always asking me, like, man, when you coming to my town? When you coming to my town? Well, all you got to do is go to johnreap.com, click on my tour dates. My next gig will be in Springfield, Missouri. Right there it is, uh, April 16 and 17 at the Blue Room, Springfield, Missouri, close to Branson, actually. Then I'm going to Bloomington, Minnesota, April 29 through May 1st, a place called House of Comedy. That's in the Mall of America, one of the biggest malls in the country. Might be the biggest mall in the country. I don't know. It's close to Minneapolis. Looking forward to going there. Um, but let's, uh, let's move on. Any questions? What are they saying on the uh, Facebooks or the YouTube guys? Anything riveting going on? Beer guy forty three says, "Bring the mullet back" in all capital letters. Oh yeah! I, look, when I got my haircut today, <laughs> I told the lady, "I'm like, I sit down, I go like, all right, I'm done with this, so we're gonna take this off like a little bit, and then I'm just gonna trim it up and kind of make it blend in." She's like, got you. Pulls out these clippers, but just mm. in the back. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's too much. I didn't mean for it to be this short back here. I wanted a little bit. It hanging, is but short. It's, it's like, like you're going into the army or something. Yeah. No. So it'll take a while, but I will, beer guy, beer gut guy, whatever your name is, I will bring the mullet back ASAP. It'll be a minute. Um, our, our small town news story. I'm, ready, I'm really looking forward to doing our small town news story. Uh, it's about a, about a deer. Have, have you ever hit a deer with your car? 
I've hit a big dog, no deer. Yeah. Never hit a deer. I've hit a deer. We'll get in that in a minute. Um, coming up pretty soon, very funny comedian Tim Gaither is going to zoom into the show. Um, and we're going to play Good Will Hunting, the what's in the box edition. We've got two boxes down here. But let's get to the next segment. Um, oh, wait. I want to do a thing. I want to follow up on a story. So last week, our small town news story was about – a boss who paid a, his ex-employee in nothing but pennies. Oily pennies. Right? Yeah, covered yeah. in oil. And um, there's a follow-up to that story. Would you like to hear the follow-up? I believe that'd be, yeah, I'd like to hear it. Because I'm like, what's this dude going to do with all them coins? Because he was cleaning them in his garage one at a time. <laughs> it's going to take him forever. Yeah. Like you said, he, he, he did it for a couple of hours. And he, think, he thinks maybe he got 100 done. There's a like nine hours. over 900 pennies he's got to yeah. clean. Um, but check this out. Coinstar, the company, took up the mantle and picked up more than 500 pounds of pennies from Flatten. That's the guy's last name, Flatten. On Thursday, the CEO of Coinstar, Jim Gaherty, said, <laughs> Gaherty? I don't know how you pronounce that last name. He said, when we heard about Mr. Flatten's penny problem, we were happy to offer our assistance and get some free publicity. He didn't say that part. <laughs> but that's exactly <laughs> that's why they it did is. it. Yeah. yeah. Coinstar has been in the coin business for over 30 years, and we process approximately 41 billion coins annually. So picking up uh, 91,000 penny, pennies was all in a day's work. 91,000. How 91, much is that? 91,000. It's like is that? $900, $910. $910. Flatten told Coinstar, I was spending an hour or two a night trying to clean the pennies and probably only cleaned off about $5 worth. I was so relieved and grateful that Coinstar agreed to help me. In addition, company executives announced that they would match Flatten's penny value and donate $1,000 to local charities of his choosing. So Flatten named two Atlanta area animal shelters to receive donations. He okay. gave the money to uh, Royal Animal Refugee and TLC Pet Rescue. Uh, one saved his dog and one saved his mother's dog. Yeah. So there you go. A happy little ending. <clears throat> you ever used the coin star before? I have. It's convenient yeah, when they, you have tons of coins. Yeah. I mean, you can't really go to a bank with that. I mean, you can, but they're going to look at you like you're an idiot. They charge you a percentage, I guess, to dump the coins Coinstar in there. Coinstar does. Yeah. It's kind of fun to do it, Only too. Many piggy banks they've taken in. From kids, you know, like parents take their pig, kids' piggy bank to Coinstar. Yeah. Have you used it? No, but I've, I've seen them, but I've never used one. Do you have I don't like have a, coins. Do you, you know, so I was going to ask you, do you have a change draw, d jar at home or anything like I, that? No, I don't. I never have cash. No, you just carry hundreds. You don't have. I just tell them to keep the change. Oh, I got yeah. you. Well, I've got a lot of change in my car, and I collect change from time to time. Just take it in there by handfuls yeah. and drop in it in. In fact, <laughs> this is kind of funny. When I got when I got divorced, you know, yeah. and I went back in my place, and there was this one big thing of coins left. I remember going like, well... Time to cash them. They're better time than now. <laughs> I did. I had this big coffee can of just coins. I went like that. It's kind of fun to, to do it. Too. $20. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to charge you 10 <laughs> yeah. Um But, yeah, so that was fun. Um, all right. Let's move on to one of our newer segments. And I want people to know that we are current. You know, this show, it is evergreen in that you can watch us anytime and it's going to be great. Except this segment, we want you to know we're current. We're in the know. We know what's trending. We know what's out there. So this next segment, what I do is I go to Twitter. I click on hashtags, right? And then I click on trending. And now we talk about what is everyone else talking about? We can weigh in. Yes, it's a new segment that I like to, uh, I like to call, here it is. Ooh, it's the best trends. Here's what you're talking about. All right. Um, and I'm just going to read this as it is on Twitter when I discovered it. It was like a day or two ago, but it says this. Army shares photos for Celica Day or Selfie Day alongside their favorite BTS group members. Does any of that make sense to you? Army. Well, I know what the Army is. What was it? BT what? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Hang on. <laughs> There's a lot of words in here I don't quite. Uh, okay. So when I read this, I'm thinking, oh, the Army's doing something. 
I like that. Yeah. I want to help out. America. Mar- go America. we got a veteran right in, right in here, Mr. Mark. Elliot, the intern's intern. Um, so right away, I'm happy about this. Army shares photos for Celica Day. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that is. But then it goes, or Selfie Day. So I'm thinking, okay, so maybe the Army, they're starting to do their own selfies, and it's called Celica. Maybe it's a military thing I don't know about. Right? right. This is where my brain's going. Yeah, yeah. And then it says, alongside their favorite BTS group members. Now I'm thinking, BTS, that's got to be a new branch of the military I don't know about. Yeah. Like, I want to get involved. And I did some digging. It's not that at all. So the Army refers to, okay, do you know what? Let's back up. BTS is a Korean boy band. You know what K-pop is? I know your daughter has to know this. I do know that that's Korean. It's a Korean pop. Yeah, K-pop, Korean that. pop. Apparently, yeah. that's it's taken off, yeah. and, and everyone's loving it right now. I mean, these guys. This is the number one trending thing in America the other day. Uh, BTS is the name of a group like Backstreet Boys, you know, but it's K-pop. But it ain't Backstreet Boys. Do you know what BTS stands for? I googled it. Do you know what it stands for? I don't. Does Elliot or, or, or Isaiah know what it stands for? Actually, I've been seeing your buddy Todd Garner uh, posting a bunch of BTS photos, but those are behind the scenes of the latest film that he's behind the about. scenes. So I thought that's what it meant. Oh, I bet he's using their hashtag. That's what we're doing, by the way, when we do these best trend comments. Like, I have no idea about K-pop, BTS, um, but I want to. I'm trying to take advantage. I'm trying to get a little clickbait. You know, I'm trying to weigh in. Like, oh, what's this? Uh, ha ha! Gotcha. Watch the show. Watch all of it. Um, so BTS stands for, well, it means the name of their group, Bang Tang Boys. Bang Tang Boys. <laughs> bang Tan. Bang not, Tangs. Ba- well, uh, not the j- Bang Tan Boys. Bang Tan Boys. But I don't know where the S comes in. Maybe that's the end of the boys. boys I yeah. guess. Bang Tan Boys. So anyway, the Army refers to their their uh, fans. You know, I call my fans bumpkins. I guess they call their fans army, which I think is a little stolen valor. I don't like it. Which is why it's getting attention because the army. Hmm. The word army's up there. Probably not. No. Nope. I think it's because they're just gigantic. And I don't think the word I'm, army has anything to do with it. Like, I don't think it's because be, I, that was just my stupid mistake. I, yeah. Oh, what? Elliot's got his hand up. To be fair, the Kiss Army dates back to the 70s. Oh, b- bam! Thank you. The Kiss Army, um, that's what Kiss called their fans, Kiss Army. So really, they're okay. stealing Kiss's uh, thing, number one. Okay. Don't tell Gene Simmons. Well, he'll sue him. <laughs> yes. He's a very litigious man. <laughs> um, so so that's what's going on. So I thought we, you and I would take advantage of this. Hey, the Alan Jackson, can you show us some uh, Bangton boys? So what people are doing is taking selfies – Trying to match. So there's one. See, I can do that. Yeah, so Alan, let's do this. I'm going to try and match as much. I should have cut my hair as much as I can uh, with one of these images right here. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we'll do a selfie side by side and we'll try to match it. You know what I mean? We'll yeah. take advantage okay. of this situation. You've sure. got the red hair? You let me know. Oh, God. All right, you got your jacket <laughs> so on. tight. I'm going to direct you here. We're going to try to match this shot here, okay? Yeah. You need to look the other direction. This way. There you go. Yep. There you go. Uh, pull your jacket close to you a little bit more. Like, a, pull it closed. Yep. There you go. All right. Now look straight off to the right. A little bit more angled. A little bit more to the right. Or to your, th- to this way. There you go. A little bit more. A little bit more. And give a nice little smile. All right. That's pretty good right there. Ooh. Got it. Yep, we got it. Okay, there's okay, one. We're good. We're good. good. All right. I might need help getting out of this jacket. No, uh, I got it. Is there another one? Oh, yeah, I can do that one. Oh, that one's going to be easy. I wish I had a green. Is he wearing a Chili's shirt? Um, <laughs> what is that? Maybe. All right, so look, you know, when we, we're we big fans of Karate Kid, mm-hmm. yep. and we had our whole Karate Kid episodes, have this left over. I'm going to put this on, and I'll try to match this. Too bad your hair's not longer. I know. I just cut it. I should have waited. All right, Alan. Okay, other other hand. Yep, there you go. And now give me uh, give me a little smile and close those eyes. There you go. 
Nice. Okay, we got that. All right. All right. We're good. We're good on that. Is there another one? This is uh, probably the only K-pop ginger one right here. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. I need some trinkets. Some You got... So... Well, if I had your little uh, oh, bracelet there. He's bracelet. Got class. Other, other hand. Yep, there you go. Look a little bit off. There you go, but still smiling, looking at me in the camera here. Yeah, that's good. That's it right there. All right. Now, you do some, Marcus. We've got some with uh, maybe some darker hair... K-pop yeah. members and then oh there we go Stamos, you oh. look look right down the camera and listen to Alan and do okay. what he says. All right, so look at the camera, Mark, and uh, kind of cock your head a little bit to your left. Yep, there, there you, go. you go. And now point your finger point at the, the camera. camera. Nope, point your finger at the camera. Right, straight out. There you go. That's it. Boom, boom. We got it. Okay. 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 Good. All right. Is there another one? Yep. Oh. Oh yeah. All right, we're okay. gonna need the jacket for this one. Look at this bad mamma gem of a jacket right this here. This jacket weighs 37, 37 pounds. That looks like a suit of armor. I bet that's bulletproof. I feel so inferior in this thing. Superior or inferior? Inferior. inferior? You shouldn't feel inferior. You should feel superior. I'm superior then. <laughs> that's what I'll be. Okay. You look like a badass. All right, Alan. All right, here we go. So you're going to need to turn Mark to your right. Okay. Spin mm. around. There you go. Okay. Now you're going to need to kind of scoot back a little bit so we can see you in the camera. Scoot backwards a little bit. There you go. Now kind of bring your head forward and out. There you go. <laughs> Turn and look at the camera. <laughs> nope. Angle your head more to your right. Yeah. Tilt it. Oh, there you go. Give me the give me the uh, blue steel look right there. So. Blue steel? That's just like this. Yeah. Yeah, just be sexy. Look at the make go. love to the I mean, camera. That works. That works. Oh yeah, that's for you, ladies. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, we got. Yes. Did you get good screenshots of that, the Alan yeah, Jackson? Yeah, we got them. So them. what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our own um, Celica selfie day alongside our favorite BTS group members from the Bang Tang Boys, and we'll see if we can get some love from that hashtag. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Um, but here's one that I can get behind. Godzilla versus Kong. Mm. Ooh. Let me tell you something. Now, I know the Alan Jackson is a huge fan. I am a Fairweather fan. I wouldn't even say I'm a fan. I liked Kong. I liked Jack Black in one of the Kongs. I don't know which one that was, the Skull Island one. I don't know how many Jack Black was in. But I'd like me some Kong. Now, the last Godzilla, I wasn't into it. In fact, I left the theater early. You bounced. I bounced only because I didn't understand the laser beam coming out of his mouth. <laughs> now that was that was your whole issue with the movie. Well, and then there was I didn't I didn't have anything interest. I wasn't invested in it at all. I didn't know the characters. It was like a whole new thing, and I don't know. I was I was not in a good mood that day. But now Godzilla, did he typically breathe fire, and they changed it to a laser beam? Do we, what do we know of the Alan Jackson? No, he's, uh, he's pretty much always done laser of some sort. A laser beam? How does a reptile shoot a laser? I, I no, no, know. dragons How do fire. How does a reptile get that freaking big? I mean, we, we don't know. Right. All right so there's a laser beam, and he's got, like a, he's got that jacket you had on. It's a, <laughs> basically a suit of armor <laughs> he wears on his back. So anyway, I love this movie, and I watched it with my mom. <laughs> I would totally recommend watching this on a giant screen if you can. The fight scenes were amazing. The, the actors in it were good. This is an all-around great, fun, popcorn. Just get in there and enjoy this movie. You know, you don't have to hang on all the dialogue. You don't have to hang on. Mark, you would love this film. Why? Because you I don't, don't have, have to. to you, you can be distracted and, you know, you don't have to listen to everything that the, the characters are saying. So, you can just enjoy this spectacle, this awesome, you know, fighting that they had in this. D. Alan Jackson, am I correct here? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, what are your no, thoughts? Absolutely. I have watched the closing fight scene like four times now, so mm. love it. it's great. Yeah, it's there's some funny parts too. What really got me was when Kong, you know, because this is basically a huge gorilla, right? And you've seen how gorillas fight. They just kind of go like this, you know, and they, they get very angry and they charge you. They do that and they do like this. Bang, bang on stuff. But this dude... He did a freaking elbow move. And I'm like, okay. What? I like this. Um, and then, of course, Godzilla's just a badass. 
Who won? I didn't think that I would like Godzilla going into this. I told Alan I'm rooting for Kong, but I kind of like Godzilla now because um, he has a heart. I don't want to spoil anything, but he's got a heart, dude. There's a lot of emotion in this film. Yeah, there really is. <laughs> Um, there's a little girl who can do sign language and talk to Kong. So he yeah. can talk. He, yeah. he can communicate with people. I don't want to spoil a whole lot, though. Yeah. Um, and there's some cool science fiction involved, which I love that, in that, uh, you know, there's people who believe that, believe that the Earth is flat. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are some people who also believe that the Earth is hollow and that and instead of a core... It's just a big hole, and there's things that live in there, and they they oh, pursue yeah. that in this film, and I think just visually, and you know, fantasy wise, science fantasy wise, I thought it was cool. Yeah, it's pretty deep, man. I I can't wait to watch it again on a big screen. The Alan Jackson, where did you watch this? I watched it at my brand new home theater in Very my house. house. Oh, wow. Yeah, podcast is doing thing. well. You guys may have to come over and uh, just watch, <laughs> watch the fight. You know, we do got to do another stream team movie review at some mm-hmm. point. Yeah, theater. So uh, all the way around, I give this uh, you know two thumbs up, whatever. Uh, totally check it out, and um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I'm missing. The 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 actors were good too. Um, I don't want to spoil anything. What can I say? Well, I can't watch it. Don't worry about it. I don't have HBO Max or. All right. So how about this? Here's a spoiler alert. All right, so get ready to hit mute or pause it and fast forward because I'm going to spoil it a tiny bit in that um, these two aren't, aren't the things that you got to worry about. There's another thing that they team up and destroy. The sign language girl. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said there was a little girl that communicated with uh, Yeah, yeah she's the Kong. bad guy. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think she, She's the pop. She like up. takes a pill and goes, and gets really big. Yeah. And so it's just like beating the crap out of them quietly. No, it's uh, not that. It is, um, it's a, what's the name of that thing, Alan? You want me to tell it right I now? I mean, it, it has a Are we name. Are spoiling it? I'm, I just gave a spoiler alert. So we're okay to spoil it. Spoiler alert. It is. It's Me- Mecha Godzilla. Mega Godzilla, no, which Mecca. 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 Mecca Godzilla. Thank you. Mecca, which means it's um, adult. It's not robot. Robot life. Like yeah. Robot oh. Godzilla. What does Mecca stand for? That means something, right? Like mechanical. Mechanical. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's a robot Godzilla. Yeah. And it's a badass too, and it's pretty cool. They have to team up and destroy it. Anyway, check out Godzilla. That'd be a good segment on the show. Is the movie spoilers. Oh, yeah. Like, watch a movie and then spoil it for everybody. We can't watch it. <laughs> right. No warning. <laughs> no, yeah. no warning. Yeah. Oh, what a, but we can't call it spoiler alerts. We had Because that would, people would know. So you can't, you have to yeah, be, be. That's funny. Just, that's a great joke to play on people who yeah. really love movies. Yeah. Like, you could go, like, um, honest, non-biased, best movie review show of all time. He, and then right out the gate, we go like, <laughs> the, the Titanic sank. Yes. Or, yeah. or whatever it is, whatever movie we're doing. We just spoil it right away. Yeah. Um, well, keep that, keep that in your back. Doc Holliday died at the end. Doc Holliday died. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that was, wasn't that fun? That's the best trends. Uh, don't forget, we're doing a dating game with one of our interns, Mr. Isaiah back there. Very handsome guy. And he uh, is good. We're going to play a dating game. So what you do is you go to the Facebook, country-ish Facebook fan page, all right? And then um, if you want to be on this show and play the dating game with Isaiah, you could do that. Just let us know, and we'll contact you. It'll be fun. We'll, be, we'll, we'll put them up on the screen. Isaiah will ask you questions, and whoever he picks, we're going to, you know, if you want, you don't have to do this. But whoever he chooses, you will win. Not only will he be on the show, but uh, we're going to take you to a nice fancy steakhouse right here in Hickory called Charlay Steakhouse. We're going to get you a limo ride anywhere you want in Hickory, pretty much. And then we're going to take you to some nice event if you want. Again, you don't have to do these things, but that's what the winner will also receive. Um, and a talent show. You got a talent? I'd like to see that. Make a little video, put that on the fan page as well. Now, I'm excited for this next part because this has been a long time in the making. Um, it's a weird time we're living in, isn't it? Very much so. 2020, pandemics. 
yeah. politics. Stay off of all that social media we, stuff we, except for our podcast. Thank you very yeah. much. We try to be that bright, happy, shiny ball in your life, a little distraction, a little relief from everything. And I started thinking, you know what? You remember Bobby McFerrin? Remember that song, Don't Worry, Be Happy? That came out when I was probably I was probably ninth grade, tenth yeah. grade maybe. Well, I think that's exactly what we need to hear right now. Yeah. Like Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Because I think, you know, we're going to get through this. It's just taking them longer than we want. But we're going to get through it. And we just need to be kind to each other and, and spread some love. And I thought that would be great to do. And I like that video. Robin Williams was in the video with Bobby McFerrin, if you remember, and uh, some other guys. So I thought, like, why don't we do that? I'll rewrite the song, but we'll make it a bluegrass version. And it's still happy. And it's still happy. Mm -hmm. And um, Justin Clyde, who can actually sing, and my buddy Joel Fry, who can also actually sing, I, I, I say, guys, let's work on this. I changed the lyrics. They did the music. The Alan Jackson made a video, and I got it right now. Would you like to see? This is the debut of Don't Worry, be happy, bluegrass version. Would you like to see it? Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Leon Jackson, Please. let's show everybody. Hey, everybody. It's your old pal John Reap here. I know we've been going through some tough times lately, but I think it's time that we get happy. Why don't you show them how to get happy, Justin? Here's a song that Bobby wrote. We just changed a couple notes, don't worry. Be happy. This past year we've had some trouble. Come on now. Everybody did a good. You did a great job yep. taking that balloon out of my hand. I took it right from your hand. Isaiah. Made me smile. <laughs> I mean, what a trooper he is putting on the uh, overalls and dance. I don't We call that dancing. That's more of a grape stomp. Yeah. We're going to get Shuffle. you a bucket of grapes. We could have had some nice wine by now. Yep. Uh, and uh, Elliot putting the mask on. Thank you for that. And I got to thank Chad Austin as well. Chad Austin mixed that whole thing. Of course, my voice was, um, you know, auto-tuned a little bit because I can't sing as good as uh, Justin Clyde. Chad Austin did all that. A very, very talented guy uh, from a band called The Logic. You ever see The Logic? Go I've see seen him. The Logic. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying them. If you ever go, if you ever see The Logic on the bill somewhere, go see him. You have to be Justin Clyde. He nailed Justin it. Justin Clyde, 100. He's 
I saw he was out west traveling somewhere. He's been uh, yeah, he's on the in road. Arizona. Yeah. In Nevada. He's out there doing it. That dude. dude's way talented. He's great. Um, now, listen. If you want to help this show, there are many ways you could do it because we are listener supported. We don't have any commercials yet. Soon to be, hopefully. But right now, it's all up to you guys. How are we keeping the lights on? It's because of nice donors like you. If you go to countryish.com, click on our support page. You can be a supporter. There's many different levels, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, and that will help us keep the lights on. Now, if you don't have any money and you still want to help us out, there's ways you could do that. Best thing you could do is go to Apple Podcast, give us five-star review. Uh, and, yeah, write a review and give us five stars. If you do that, I'll have one of my interns read your review on the show, and we'll give you a shout-out. In fact, I think we might have a new one now. Uh, Isaiah, the intern, any new uh, reviews? Yeah, we have two new iTunes reviews. Both of them are five stars. Nice. Just give me one and right this now. This one is by B-U-T-T-E. One, I guess that'd be Butte. but one Butte. Butte. B U T T E. Yeah, B U T T E. Butte. Butte. Butte one said, "Great show to listen to while I travel down the road to work." John and the boys have a great sense of humor. If you like some of the greats like Mitch Hedberg, this show is for you. What? Wow! Thank you, Butte one. Good comparison. I'm not going to dispute that at all. Um, Mitch, Her yeah, no, Mitch Hedberg, that's pretty good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, look, we got a lot of show to do. We got Tim Gaither, we got Small Town News. Have you ever hit a deer with your car? Tell me about it, because I got to tell you mine here in a minute. And that this Small Town News story involves that. And we got two boxes from Goodwill that we're gonna un, we're gonna unbox some Goodwill gifts. You want to stay tuned for that? A lot of show to do. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more country ish. After this. Hey everybody, John Reap here, and I want you to go cruising with me. Not in our cars, but on a ship. Yeah, let's take a ship together. It's the Reap's Peeps Comedy Cruise, November 6th through 11. This year, we leave out of Port Canaveral, Florida. We go to Private Beach in Haiti, where they have the world's longest zip line over water. We're going to Nassau, and it's five days, baby. I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing karaoke, and I'm doing stand-up comedy, and we're even doing Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. So get on the boat with me. Go to johnreap.com, click on the Reaps Peeps Comedy Cruise, and this is the t-shirt you get. Isn't that something? I'll see you on the boat. If you love this podcast and you love wearing shirts, well, we got something for you. If you go to countryishpodcast.com, click on merchandise, it'll take you to my store, and we have an awesome t-shirt for you. It's a country-ish podcast t-shirt. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Also, it's got the website on there. It's a soft tee. Very soft. Feels good on your skin. And it helps us keep the lights on here at the, at the studio. So check out countryishpodcast.com. Click on merchandise. Get yourself a t-shirt. And know that I love you. All right, we're back. Now, I'm very excited to introduce our next uh, Who's Zooming Who guest. Is he here now? Yep. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, he's in the bullpen. He's ready to go. This guy's very funny. I met him a long time ago in Kansas City. He's like me, kind of a southern guy trying to make it in Los Angeles. He's a bit of a metro Jethro, very country-ish himself. Um, let's, let's find out. Let's talk to my very good friend, very funny, Tim Gaither. Oh! And joining me right now, the very funny, very talented, very handsome Tim Gaither. How are you? Good, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good to have you on here, man. It's been a minute. Um, I think the last time I actually physically saw you was when I lived in Los Angeles. Yeah, it may have been that New Year's party you had. Yeah. Like, year that was. Yeah, we. it was either... Was it New Year's or Fourth of July? I had something at my condo in LA, and I think you were there. So, yeah, man, I miss seeing your face. Actually, I think the last time I saw you, you did my podcast it was probably at the Comedy Store. Oh, right, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, how's that? Are you still doing your podcast? 
Yeah, you know, I've been talking to, uh, you know, I was a, I wrestled my whole life. So I one day I, I'm friends with all these big time wrestlers on Facebook. And I just hit one of them up one day and asked if you want to do my podcast. And it kind of turned into this thing. And now I've, I've done like 30 of them with uh, people that I, you know, looked up to when I was a kid. So it was kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Well, that's great. I know with um, COVID and all that stuff going on, I didn't know if the comedy store was doing much. Are you doing it from your your place or are you going to the store? No, I'm doing it from my house, yeah. you know, Zoom and all that. I'm not even sure if they'll let people in the comedy store. You know, L.A.'s kind of gone nuts about that stuff. What have you been up to since COVID, since you can't tour? What are you, I mean, just working on the podcast? Yeah, and raising my boy, you know, that's been a blessing. I've been around, I've been able to be around him a lot and I'll take him, I'll take him at least three days of the week. Some days he, my, my uh, wife works with my, with my in-laws so he can take, he can take, she can take the boy over there and that works out. But uh, I've been on the road. I've done, I think I've done six weeks in the last 10 months. So yeah. when I do get on stage, it's kind of weird, you know, like I, I don't remember my act until I get on stage and I'm freaking out about it. And, and every word that comes out of my mouth, I'm like, well, they, they keep coming out the way they're supposed to, but <laughs> one of my favorite stories that you told, it always sticks out is one about, um, maybe it was a news interview. You saw of a lady who had to interview a guy who put uh, a, a lot of worms in his mouth and is it going to get us book? What was that story? There was a guy, I, I haven't done that bit in years, but there was a guy who put 314 worms in his mouth and it was the world record. And, uh, you know, I don't know how it became the world record. I guess some other, some other idiot put 313 worms in his mouth. I don't know. Yeah, right. yeah you got to have something to break. You know, there's got to be a point, you know, starting point. Yeah. And I would do the bit and uh, I would do it in this rednecky voice. And, and uh, I, I would talk real fast. I would just sprint talk for like a full minute and a half. Yeah. And, and it was really difficult bit to do. And if it didn't, if it didn't hit, I just felt like an idiot. And <laughs> I remember one night I was in uh, Minnesota somewhere doing some crappy one nighter and this group of women were in the front and they were just talking through the whole thing. And when I got to the end of that thing, I was so mad because it took so much effort and they weren't even looking at me. Oh. I just lost it on them. And to this day, it's probably the, the my biggest meltdown I've ever had on stage as far as just like, <laughs> you know how hard it was to do that, you idiot. Yeah. What's what what's your home before the pandemic, what was your what would you call your home club? Um, probably the comedy store and the comedy and magic club were the two main ones that I was at. And and I did work I do I, I just did Vegas not too long ago, which was Super weird because they had the uh, six of the eight shows were good. One of them was bad and one of them was god awful. Um, but, you know, as long as they were laughing, it was fine. But the audience was 25 feet away from us. They had to be 25 feet away. So, you know, how that kills the intimacy. Yeah. And then they were in this big horseshoe shape. Um, so, and everybody had to wear masks, you know. And it was just, I felt like I was in a snuff film and I was on the bad side of it. <laughs> I like to talk about my dad a lot in my act. That's like yeah. my bread and butter. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Um, half my act is me making fun of him. So I like to always ask the other comedian, like, you, what about you? What was your relationship like? Was he the funny one or whatever? <laughs> yeah, my dad had a uh, – he definitely had a different sense of humor. And uh, he was very he, – he liked to he liked to play games with little kids. Like, we – we, we, we wrestled, I wrestled from the time I was seven to almost 20, to, to the time I was 20, two years into college. And uh, when we were little, I remember one story in particular, I think I was in seventh grade and I was at the state tournament and he used to play these mental games with me. And at the time I didn't realize, you know, there was this kid named Nathan Bennett and I had to wrestle him in the semifinals at state. And not too long before the match, my dad came up to me and he goes, you know, I heard Nathan Bennett in the hallway saying he was going to kick your ass this time. <laughs> and so Nathan Bennett came up to me, you know, just being a good sport and, and shook my hand and said good luck. And I looked at him and I go, you're going to kick my ass, huh? And he was like, <laughs> what? 
<laughs> and I beat the crap out of this kid. I mean, just bad. And then, and then later on, I think I asked my dad, I was like, did he really say that? And he's like, no, but I knew it'd fire you up. And, <laughs> right. So he loved to do stuff like that. And sometimes they'd work, he'd work the table, you know, where kids come up and find out what leg band they are and all that stuff. And this kid, these kids would be seven years old. And my dad would be looking over at me and he'd go, isn't that that five time state champion he's got to wrestle? And you'd see the kid's eyes just get all fearful, you know? And I'm like, dad, <laughs> first of all, he, he would have had to have won his first state title at two. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, right, right. <laughs> so he, he was uh, funny about that. He was very uh, thrifty. Like, you know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And at the state tournament, you had to have wristbands to get down on the floor and they had to be a certain color. So my dad would keep those wristbands from the year before and then he would find out what color wristband you had to get on and he'd just go through his drawer and find the wristband from whatever year you <laughs> needed the blue or the green and he'd put that one on. Or one time, he was a real good artist, one time he, he uh, used white out and painted one completely white because it was white that year yeah. and nobody could tell and he'd just flash it. And one time he, uh, we got TP'd. I remember being a, getting TP'd by somebody. My sister was five years older than me. And when I was like fourth grade, she was probably 13. And a bunch of kids TP'd us. And instead of throwing it away, my dad took it all off the tree and just brought it in the house. and was like, we got free toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah that's, that's one way to look at it. Um, yeah. What you don't want to do, and I saw one of my neighbors do this after we TP'd their house, was get a water hose and try to like dissolve it and have it fall out. It doesn't yeah. work because it yeah. just sort of like loops over and it looks soggy and it looks sad. Um, like a <laughs> Right, right. So what made you want to start stand-up comedy coming from having this wrestling background? Uh, how did you know you was funny? What, why did this happen? Um, well, I mean, I was always funny, like in school, you know, but I was, I was kind of quiet at the same time. I would kind of pick my spots. And when I was in college, uh, I was going to, I said I was going to be a teacher because I didn't know what the hell else to do. I figured I would have my summers off and coach wrestling and be that, that teacher that let you grade your own papers. And, <laughs> right. you know, I knew I wasn't going to take it very seriously. And the farther I, the farther I got into school, I was getting ready to enter the school of education, which is the final step. You know, you've got like one or two semesters left and then you student teach and then you're a teacher. And the closest, the closer I got to it, I started having anxiety. Like I went to a, a teacher aiding and I realized I didn't want to be a teacher. Like I could, I, I did middle, middle school was the, the, the uh, school I went to and all these, I just couldn't stand these kids, you know? And, <laughs> and one time they were having like a, they were having some kind of a game where they, you know, the, they, they split the, cre the class up into like four different groups and the, cl the group that couldn't get any answers right, I was like half-ass helping them cheat. And I'm like, <laughs> if I'm helping these kids cheat, my heart probably isn't really into being a good teacher. Yeah. And so anyway, I was, get, I was having a lot of anxiety about it because I was getting deeper into it. And then I listened to a Bill Hicks CD with a friend of mine and I walked home that night. And by the time I got home, I was like, I thought to myself, that is the funniest guy I've ever heard, and I've never heard of him, which means I can do this for a living even if I never get famous. And so I went to my counselor the next day, and I was like, I've got 100 credits. I might as well get a, I might as well get a degree, but I don't want to be a teacher. I'm going to be a comedian. And she looked at me like I was crazy. Mm -hmm. But I just knew that I could do it, even though I was the kind of kid that got – I would get so nervous the first few days of school almost every year up until high school that I would throw up. But for some reason, I just knew that I could do this. And uh, so when I, by the time I got home and to my apartment, she had sent me a, a met, an answer machine message that said, I found this book for you. I felt bad. I didn't know how to advise you. Um, but I found this book called Zen and the Art of Stand-Up Comedy. And so I went down, I, I went down to the bookstore and I got it. And I read it, and it was a real small book called Zen the Art of Stand-Up Comedy by Jay Sankey. And there was this paragraph that kind of described the mentality of a comedian and, you know, how they're kind of, you know, the outsider looking in kind of a thing. And it just, when I read this paragraph, I got chills all over me. I'm like, that's me. Yeah. And I read this book, and I went ahead and got my degree, but I didn't want to try comedy before I got my degree because I didn't want to get discouraged and not follow through with my plan. Yeah. So I went ahead and got a social science degree because she told me I could get one with, within a semester. And 
then I started doing open mics at Stanford and Sons, and which was a great club because great place to start rather because it was such a good club. That one in Westport, with yes, white check stage, yeah. And it went it went well right up until like I think the tenth time I did comedy, I made I finally made a little bit of money. I made eight dollars <laughs> at the the best. They split the door, and my cut of it was eight bucks, and that was the first time I ate it. But up until that point, I had done really well. I remember thinking. You know, I, I, I hear all this about how hard stand-up comedy is, but I don't know if that applies to me. And then, <laughs> like that, as soon as I had that thought, man, I just ate it like you wouldn't believe. Wow, okay, uh, I love this. So you're saying the first several times of going on stage, it was a good out turn. Like, you did well. I did it, well the first eight or nine times, and wow. then that first time I made money, I ate it. And I was sitting in the back of the room, and we all went short that show. Chris Porter was the headliner. He started a year or two ahead of me at Stanford. And he went short. Everybody was going short. And the guy managing the room was freaking out because we were like 30 minutes, you know, shorter than the show was supposed to be. And a guy named Brian Burgess came in, who is the funniest guy you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. And he went up there and just crushed it. I mean, came in off the street, wasn't even planning on going up, and they're like, Brian, we need you. And he went up there and just destroyed. And I sat in the back of the room and thought, well, you can't quit just because you ate it. You know, this guy's been at it 15 years. That's why he's so good, you know. And yeah. <laughs> and cause I was I was sitting back there like, I'm I'm done. I don't I don't need people telling me I'm not funny and you know, <laughs> having a bad attitude about it. And then he went up there and just took it to a, a different level, you know, that none of us was on. And yeah. And so, thankfully, he did, because I probably would have quit. Wait, you had to follow him that night, or you went before him that night? No, we, we all, I had, I had already gone up. Okay, so you had already eaten it, and then he came yeah. in and saved the, they saved the show. I'm sitting in the back of the room pouting, you know, like, yeah. this, <laughs> I, can't, I don't want to do this, this is stupid, you know, because I finally had a bad set, and I had never had a bad set to that point, and man it's hard to breathe when they don't laugh and it's still that way for me. Yeah. It's, 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 it's one of the worst feelings ever. Where can people find your podcast and what's it called? I want you to plug it. Uh, just the Tim Gaither podcast. It's on SoundCloud and it's also, if they go to youtube.com slash Tim Gaither, it'll be there. And, uh, a lot of comedy videos are on there also. And I'm, I'm getting ready to, to start a pod. I'm getting ready to start putting one on rumble too. So, okay. uh, yeah, I'm not even sure when they can find that. Just if they if they typed in Tim Gaither on Rumble, I'm sure they'd find it. Well, uh, keep at it, man. It was great to talk to you again. Um, let's let's do this again. Anytime you want me on your show, just holler at me, okay? I owe you one. All right, brother. I appreciate it. All right. Great talking. Take it easy, Tim. Tim Thank Gaither, you, everybody. Huh? All right, how about that? Tim Gaither. Timmy. Very Timmy. funny guy. Love me some Tim Gaither. All right, it's time to move on. By the way, I want to say thank you for being quiet during the interview. I know, but I never get to answer, ask any questions. Well, you it's know. It's like you totally shut me off during these interviews. Yeah. But it, it's fine. I appreciate it. I do it to uh, Sebastian as well. Yeah. You know, these are my comedian friends. I just It's, just, it's going to be one of one You're ashamed of us. Of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to hide you. It's okay. Uh, well, let's move on to one of our segments. Uh, you know, you know, this is us. Um, dare I say the anchor of the show? Because there's a lot of negative things going on in the news, as we discussed. Um, politics and pandemics. We like to stay away from that. We like to find the, the fun, funny, weird, crazy stories that are fall through the, the nooks and the crannies. Uh, thank you. Now, this is also Justin Clyde. Let him tell you about this segment. Take it away, Justin. We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All righty, you're going to like this one. You know, I kept asking you guys at the beginning of the show, have you ever hit a deer? Huh? I have. And this this one's pretty nuts. A deer crashes through a school bus windshield and lands on a sleeping student. He said, I was really confused. This is, this is in Virginia, the state for lovers and deer. Um, yeah, maybe the maybe he should have counted sheep instead. But this kid was asleep 
and a deer flew through the window, and there's a video of it. Um, I could read you a little bit about the story, or we can go straight to the video, whatever you want to do. Video says it all. All right, let's watch this video of the Alan Jackson. I love it when we got a good video. Let this lady explain it. Or maybe, it, yeah, that one's fine. Either one. This morning, an unexpected wake-up call for these students in Virginia. <laughs> oh, my God. A small deer comes crashing through their school bus. For the student trying to sleep in the front row, it was nothing to fawn over. Fawn over. Get it. The deer appears to skim the bus's hood before obliterating wow. the windshield. Luckily, that student in the front row was in deep sleep, crouched down in his seat. It would have hit him in the chest. Or Crouching the tiger, or hidden so deer. Very lucky. He's very lucky. And he didn't even wake up. Good thing he was wearing his hood and his mask. The was able to open the door and the deer scurried off. <laughs> and the students shocked over what they just witnessed. Where do you come from? The deer ran off through a field nearby Dude, and seemed okay. Dude, this is insane. Now, deer, I think, are probably some of the dumbest animals ever. Yeah, I agree. I so feel like, like they're trying to commit suicide. Like, they see these things like, if I'm going out, I'm going to go out. I'm going to mess up this road. And their car. And yeah. their car. I'm going to mess up. Taking I'm all gonna, these dumb humans out with me. I'm going to make them pay some insurance money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this thing flies through that windshield like it was shot out of a cannon. And it's lucky that that kid, as you can see, he's crouched down behind. I mean, he's in the front seat, but there is like a back of a seat in front of him. That's like a, It's like a shield. Yeah. And he's laying, like he's leaned down like this and he's laying up against it. And, I mean, had he been standing or just sitting up straight, he'd probably taken his dang head off. First off, I'm, I'm glad they didn't have video when we were in school, in a school bus. Oh, I know. Jeez. Because we had high school students driving our school bus. Yes, we did. Uh, uh, Greg Martin was one of them. Was it then Greg Martin? Or what was I had his a, name? I had a, I it was had a dude a, who looked just like uh, the boss, Bruce Springsteen. Really? I forgot his last name. But he used to drive the bus, and he was like a year older than us or something. But he looked like he was 35. Yeah, they got a, they got a credit for driving the bus, and they got to take the bus home with them. Yep. You remember that? Yep. Man. So this guy, he looks like an older fella, you know. I don't know. He's got glasses and a hat. Yeah. He's got his now, – now, I don't know if you're supposed to drive – that's not 10 and 2. You don't put your hands in the middle of the wheel. <laughs> See, the steering wheel like that. It's going to be his fault. After everything's <laughs> said and done, it's the bus driver's fault probably. Have you? So you've not hit a deer though. No, have you hit a deer? I hit a deer, and this is why I say this. I think they're the dumbest animals because I was driving. Uh, I think this was in West Virginia, and I was driving my Suzuki Sidekick. Oh yeah, love remember that, that thing. I remember that. Yeah. It's like a box kite. Yeah, flip me over. I, well, that car been through a lot of stuff. So I'm driving that thing. Was it or the truck? No, it was a Sidekick. Anyway, I'm driving along. I'm going at least 65. And I'm surrounded by trees. It's you know you're in the mountains. There's yeah. And out of nowhere, as if it were running for its life from something in the woods, a deer comes darting out. And it like as soon as it made it to the road, like I saw it, it saw me, and it's, it's like we made this eye contact, yeah. <laughs> and I <laughs> hit this deer. I hit the deer on the side like that, and I'm not joking. When I hit the deer, its head flopped like that and looked at looked me. <laughs> and then it went down, and I ran over the deer. Oh, like a speed bump. Yeah. Yes. And blood went all over the windshield. Oh, no. And, I mean, there was – I'm not joking. When I hit this thing, it, it ruined the radiator in the front of the thing, and there was poop in the headlight. <laughs> Like, it, it hit it so hard, the poop came out. You knocked the Blood shit out the, of it. I knocked the shit, shit out, out of it. it. And I, my first instinct was not, oh, I hope, I'm so sorry. I was pissed off at the deer. Yeah. I got out and like, what are you doing, you idiot? And it's, it's dead. I'm and it screaming at the deer. Yeah. And I get back in my car. It barely, is, it barely starts. It's almost totaled. There's blood on the windshield. So, and I went to do the fluid thing. I'm yeah. out of fluid. They busted your fluid. Well, I just was out. Oh, to wipe the blood off. Yeah, I couldn't even clean the So was the, the deer dead? The deer died. So you didn't have to lay it. You didn't have to, like, put it out of its no, misery. That's I, good. I killed the deer. You didn't have to, like, grab it and break its neck or nothing. No, I just did that anyway because I was pissed. 
Yeah. I went in and was like, you mother. <laughs> I just started beating the crap out of him. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I killed the deer. And I got back in the car. And I was like, I got to go to the nearest gas station. And I had to drive with my head out the window to see. That's great. Because there was blood everywhere. I was driving like this. Yeah. And I pull up this gas station. <laughs> I remember this dude's pumping gas. And he sees me coming in, <laughs> leaning out with blood all over my car, <laughs> pooping the headlight. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, who don't think I murdered somebody, you know? But this dude, because I guess it was West Virginia, he just goes, did you keep it? <laughs> did you keep it? I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're right. I hit, no, I, no, it's a mile up that way. Yeah. You can have it. Well, uh, but they, they pissed me off. A lot of, a lot, this is not the first time this has happened. Well, a lot of people a, die by hitting deer. It's a wonder you killed the deer. They usually get up like this one did and run off after they totaled your car. <laughs> know, right. You know? So, yeah, that is amazing that no one got hurt in this thing. And uh-huh. it's amazing that that kid was ducked down. It's amazing that the the kid, I mean, the deer got up and ran out. How high is a school bus? I mean, that's eight feet. Yeah. So that deer. Yeah, it was jumping. Like, he probably didn't top. hit the deer with the, the hood. I mean. It bounced he, off the hood, maybe. I think it jumped and it skimmed the top of the hood and slid it in, in the windshield. Yeah. Anyway, that's insane. Um, and just walks off, no, no worries, busted a windshield. So if you do you think you could go through a windshield and get up and just be fine? <laughs> no, probably not. No way. But they're superhuman, I think. Yeah. They're super, Hard-headed. Super dumb. Hard-headed. Good, it's also a good thing that deer didn't have antlers. I mean, that oh. was a young deer. What if that was a big buck, you know? That would have done a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the deer scampered off, as we see, after the bus driver slowed down and opened the door. The 15-year-old kid, Brendan Martin of uh, – Powhatan, I can't, Powhatan High School. He was not injured, but he was befuddled. He was really confused because I was trying to sleep and I woke up to something on my back. I realized it was a deer and I was just very confused because I, I'd never seen a deer actually jump through a windshield and then land. That's nothing you see every day. Yeah. No, no, most people haven't seen that young Martin. Despite the crazy incident, um, Martin said he'll still look for his favorite seat at the front of the bus. Because he's the cool kid. Is that the cool kid at the front? No, not the cool we kid's young. at the back. Not when we were young. I mean, he seems like a cool kid. He, you know, he had a white hood, white mask. He looked like a snow ninja. He did. Yeah, deer. I mean, snow ninjas are not afraid of deer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. It's like he knew it was coming. Yeah, he goes. There's no way it's going to happen twice. So he's going to sit in that same seat. Yeah, I, I don't blame him. That's good logic. Like getting struck by lightning twice. It's almost impossible. Makes sense. Although there are people who've been struck seven times. All right, let's move on. The T might be son. The town may be small, but the news is huge. Alrighty then. Alrighty. I'm having a good time. Are you having a good time? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, good, pretty good. good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm having pretty. a blast. P-U-R-D-Y. Pretty. Look, let's show people what we got over here. Huh? Look at this. This is another thing that, that that trends a lot, a lot of hashtaggy type stuff. I know we get a lot of attention. We to got this. Uh, two boxes that we're going to un here in a minute. Uh, but first, let me remind you um, that we're everywhere and to uh, share. You can hit share right now. You can hit it anytime. Do that. And um, Isaiah, let's do one more iTunes review, and then we'll get into the next segment. What do you say? Huh? Yeah. Right. Okie dokie. <laughs> let's get let's get into it. Um, we got an iTunes review from Aubrey Lynn 1111. Mm-hmm. They said, watched his stand-up when I was in high school with my friends, and one of them went to see his stand-up in Columbus on Valentine's Day. Okay. I was so happy to start following his podcast again. Oh, wait, no. I was happy to start following his work again and listen to this podcast. It's great. I love the hometown news. That's my favorite Close part enough. for sure. Close enough. It's small town. Is it? I'm not going to, you know, dissect it. He's still so funny and seems very down to earth. I'm a mental health therapist working with pretty severe diagnosis and in low income areas. And listening to a funny podcast on my way home really helps me de-stress on my drive home. Wow. What was her name? Aubrey Lynn 1111. Aubrey Lynn 1111. We thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, she's uh, that's that's not an easy job working nope. with mental health patients. So, shout out Aubrey Lynn, and uh, don't forget you want your name shouted out. Write us a nice review on i. 
Tunes. All right. So uh, I think we should let the cat out of the bag, huh? What's that? Your real There's last name. There's a cat name. in the bag. No, oh, my real last name. No, no, That's I'll reveal a secret. My last name is Hunt. Yeah. I, li- I, I was joking earlier when I said his last name was Stamos. He's not really related to John Stamos. His last name is not even Stamos. His last name is Hunt. And we did. We come up with this next segment to go along with his last name because we also both of us like going to Goodwill. It's fun to walk in there and see what kind of treasures you can get. And, Never know. And you can get stuff for steel sometimes. Good God, yes. So we made up this segment, but we also combined it with the trends that are happening, with the hashtag unboxing. Right. Yep. That's a thing. Right. It is. Alan Jackson. The uh, unboxing is like a thing. Yes. It is. People do that. Yeah, and they uh, say, I remember what's Brad in the, Pitt said it. What do they sometimes. say? They say, what's in the box? Who's in the box? Oh, uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, uh, what's in the box? <laughs> there we go. Oh, was, you. That, was that your cue for me to play that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I missed that. No, no, it's totally fine. You're, you're doing a lot back there, and I, I appreciate it. Um, Thank you, Brad. But this uh, is segment... Uh, is called well we go to a goodwill yeah and your last name is hunt h-u-n-t yep are you ready yep it's a segment, segment that, that we, we like, like to call, call goodwill hunting goodwill hunting goodwill Very good. All right, buddy. You want to go first? You want me to go first? Let's see. Oh, here's the trick. It has to make sense. That's yeah, part gotta, of the fun of the game. It's got to relate somehow. I can't right. just go buy you a... Uh, Anybody could go to Goodwill and exchange gifts on a on a podcast. That's not yeah. what we're doing. What we're doing is making it make sense. He don't know what's in here. I do not know what's in there. You don't know what's in here. So I'll go first. Okay. So uh, in your stand-up, you've got a, a bit that you do about shooting fish out of a barrel right oh yeah that's as easy as shooting fish in a barrel yeah i'm like well is that even that easy <laughs> I think have you I've... ever tried that no shooting fish in a barrel fish are fast yeah well, why would you even do that do you Go think ahead. you'd be able to hit a fish if you shot well the whole bit is like it depends i guess on the gun and the type of fish and the size of the barrel now if we're talking <laughs> minnows <laughs> and like a bb gun that would be very difficult yeah, if we're talking them. a shotgun and one big ass bass pretty simple easy yeah, a lot of factors. Yeah. So, True. yeah, I do have that bit. It's as easy as shooting fish in a barrel. It's a funny bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I've got something that kind of goes along with that. Okay. Um, a barrel. Got it. Ooh. Funny. I'm funny. Um, and you make people laugh. Oh, got it. A That's lot. What this is That's about. what this is about. Oh, can't wait to, so, I can't wait to un this box. Yeah, take your time with it, and there's... Wrapping paper and all kind of things in there, so uh, have at it. For the for the microphone. Pop it. Can you do the pop? Can you pop the bubbles? Ooh, ooh! Look at this. Barrel. Everybody see that? It's a barrel of laughs. Yep. Acting out. Get your act together. This must be a game. Oh yeah. Guaranteed fun for the whole family. Guaranteed or your money back. Open it up. Okay, this is made by Red Boost. How much was that? Is there a price tag on it anywhere? I can't I remember. You tell me. All right, here we go. There's the barrel. Okay, acting out. Get your act together. Play the game for four plus players. The objective, combine random clue and acting style cards together and act them out. For your teammate to guess, right. everybody acts at the same time to share the fun and the embarrassment. Let's so do you, this. I just happen to flip to a card. Yeah, I'm gonna hand it to, to you. Combine them. Okay. So you take one of them cards and you combine it with this card. Okay. And I'm supposed to do that. Okay. Oh, and there's a look at this. There's an hourglass. There's a timer. <laughs> and your pretty dog too. So I'm gonna give you these. Mm-hmm. Ready? But don't make me. You don't. You can't make me do this. I'm making you do it. <laughs> All right. Because you're the actor here, not me. Ready? So what am I, do I look at the cards? Yeah, you look oh, at the I cards, see. and you have to act it out. All right, so if we were playing this in a game, there'd be four of us. All right, yep. so uh, all right, hang now on, hang on, hang on. So this is the act out, Yep. and this is the style of acting. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is the action that I'm doing, Yep. 
and this is how I have to do it. And you can choose one or the other. Huh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, here we go. Ready? Yep. I get it. You're okay. Fighting off a bee in slow motion. Yes. Yes. So the act out was fending off, fending a, bee, off a bee. And then I chose act in slow, slow motion. motion. The top style. This would be a fun yeah, game. That would be fun. Thank you, buddy. You're we'll welcome. have to play this one night. You know what I'm saying? We'll take that Get with some us on our next together. Trip. Do yep. that. All right. Now, I got you something, buddy. And I'm so sorry to tell you it's not as polite. Or as kind as your gift. Um, oh, you're being a meanie butt. No, I'm being a safe, healthy, hygienic butt. Good timing right now with what everything that's going on. You know, with so pandemics. Was at your house not long ago, and I know you got two kids, and I know that um, it's a busy kitchen. Got to eat, and you're a busy dude. Yeah, and it. you do cook a lot, but sometimes. You gotta just do the microwave and reheat things, right? And I get that. I do. I use microwave all the time. But sometimes, if you don't like cover up the dish with the food on it, it pops. Food will stop and, popping. Yeah, it goes before everywhere. you know it, you got stuff just like spaghetti all up sauce in there. is the worst. Yeah, I get it. I I saw the inside of your microwave. It uh, not good, huh? I guess. Okay. <laughs> and so I got you this gift with that in mind, with the microwave. Be right. messy. And I hope it doesn't make you angry. Oh. Ah, open see. the gift. What's in the box? It's in there. What oh, is yeah. Th- Hold it up and read oh. it. Angry Mama Microwave Cleaner. Angry Mama. So you're. I'm going to let you do this while I read it. Here, I'll hold it to the camera and you read it. Remove, remove angry mama's hair by twisting to the right and lifting off. Remove angry mama's head. Okay, you should do that. Add vinegar and water. <laughs> We're going to act on it. Okay. Okay. A um, little bit of lemon. So replace head um, and hair. Microwave for seven minutes on high. Yeah. Allow to stand for two additional minutes. Remove so, angry mamas by her arms. So you got to be careful you don't get burned. Right. Well, um, so this this whole thing is just a microwave cleaner. So it you, cleans the microwave. Yeah, so you, you put it in their microwave, and see it's got these little holes on the top of its head, yeah. and it heats up the vinegar and water and the lemon, and it, I guess it steams it up. But where does everything go? Does it, start, <laughs> does it burn off? I think off? it probably just falls down, and you have to wipe it off. Yeah, Elliot's but, got his hand raised. Uh, yes, it, it, it softens it so that you can wipe it out easily. You're right. Yeah. So what it says at the end, um, the remaining liquid inside Anger Mama can be applied to a sponge to wipe the microwave clean. Mm. So why can't I just take a uh, spray cleaner, like a Clorox of some kind cleaner, and spray the microwave and wipe it down? Answer, please. Because it won't be warm enough, it'll still you'll have to use too much elbow grease, and it's hard to get in there. The microwaves are up here sometimes, and you gotta get up like this. Not this if this loosens it all up. Not for if I you. spray it and let it set for seven minutes. You could spray it and then turn the microwave on. Probably. Yeah. But it would be not as cool as saying this. Mama. I mean, don't you want something like this in your house? It kind of looks mama? like you a little bit. It's got the red head. <laughs> it does. I mean, the blue I shirt. Mean, I could grab my hair back. Is like there that. eyeballs or anything with it? It's just I don't know. Yeah, right yeah. Here. So I covered you had it all wrong. See, look, the face is angry. She is an angry mama. She lost her hair. She's upset. Angry mama. There you go, buddy. You never know what you're gonna find at Goodwill. You never know. I've what never you're seen this get. before, but I've seen it now. Yes. It's an angry mama microwave cleaner. Thank you. You are certainly welcome, and I've had a good time up here and here today, uh, Mr. Stamos. I appreciate you joining me. Did you have a good time? Nah, good. I thank you for having me. I appreciate you're it. You're certainly really, welcome. Really well. Let's go around the table. Any final thoughts from either of my interns? Well, you had asked if anyone had hit a, ever hit a deer. Yes. And uh, Billy Shaver says, almost hit a deer once, swerved to miss it, ended up in a ditch instead. Wish I'd hit the deer. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. yeah they're, they're, they're fast. They're, they're agile. They're it, dangerous. Either way, it's the card of entitled. The ditch or the deer. Yeah. Okay. Bad luck. Well, um, we good? Everybody good? Let's, let's wrap good this. here. Huh? I said all good here. Thank you. Um, nice we, hat, by the way. Yeah. Nice oh, hat, by the way. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to run for mayor of Hickory in well, 2026. 
I'm after you win. win. After, after, yeah, after I am win. still running for, obviously, uh, Isaiah's wearing my hat today. Um, I'll let him do it from time to time. Uh, he's a good kid. And so I will be running for mayor of Hickory. Keep that in mind. And I, I would appreciate your vote if you're in the Hickory, uh, within the city limits. Hickory and you proper. Vote, vote for John Reap. Uh, more to come on that. But I got tour dates. If you go to johnreap.com, click on tour dates. I might be coming to your town pretty soon. I know for sure I'm going to Springfield, Missouri, and I'm going to Bloomington, Minnesota. Uh, so check out my tour dates sometime. johnreap.com. You can get merchandise there. Um, if you go to countryish.com, uh, you can check out old episodes. You can check out new episodes. You can subscribe from there. Um, yeah, there's a mukbang I did with Mimosa. More of those to come as well. I'm doing cameos. That's where uh, you can hire me to do a personal video message for you. If you go to cameo.com slash John Reeb, you can do that. Ginger Beard Man, still available. Amazon Prime, still up there. Um, you can watch that if you haven't seen it yet. Check it out. It's hilarious. And Ginger Payne, my album, is on YouTube and anywhere else you can get albums for... The Alan Jackson for Elliot, the intern for Isaiah, the intern for a Mark for a Mar for Marcus Stamos. <laughs> so much. My name is John Reap. Bicycle. Well, I've on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a bike and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm countryish. Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and yourself park cars. Thank God I'm countryish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for countryish. Woo! Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us many different ways. There's a uh, Different levels, you got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite, and all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, t-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You gotta check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you.